today we're uh, today we're working on a 460 Ford. This is actually for a, a customer of mine. This is going to be a 532 cubic inch stroker motor. We've already got the block uh, Magnaflux clean and, and bored. Um, this is going to be a little bit of an extended video, um, specifically because this is actually for the customer. I'm going to go ahead and post this for any of you who are interested in it, but this video is actually uh, specifically for the owner of this block. And I'm also going to showcase a new block fixture that we have. If you look down here, we've got a, we've got a block milling fixture that's made by BHJ. Um, I've always liked BHJ products and we're real proud of this fixture. The, the price wasn't too bad on it and uh, it works really, really well. And so if you're interested in any of you who are interested in possibly purchasing or understanding how a BHJ fixture works, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the setup on this thing. The BHJ fixture basically consists of uh, a rollover bar here and then of course we have a couple of rings. Now these rings have flat spots on them and so the rings are designed, these are actually the rings that are designed for a 460. So what we want to do is we want to take these flat spots and we want to go ahead and we want to set these rings in the mains and we'll locate our flat spots right here, one here and one here. So that just sits inside there. And then we'll take our other ring and we'll do the same thing on the rear main here. We'll just put our ring right in there, and locate it. And at that point, then we'll just take our main caps and put them on. These are, these are designed to work in conjunction with the, the main bore and the main caps of the engine. So we'll just go ahead and put our main caps right on there run the bolts down and of course we're going to seat the caps and those go in there just like that but what I've discovered is that when you're setting this up you can put the rings in there and you can go ahead and slide the bar through but what I've discovered is a better way to do it is to actually go ahead and put these rings on the bar first so we'll take our we'll take our bar here and we'll get this we'll put this ring on We'll go ahead and slide our rings on. It's a, it's a pretty close tolerance fit, so you got to kind of work that on there just right. Once you get it started, it'll, it'll go right on. There it goes. It's pretty close tolerance there. And then, of course, we'll put our other ring on over here. So you get your rings in there, and then you can just go ahead and take the whole bar and set it up in the mains here. And of course we want our flat spots on either side to be right there in the block just where the block and the cap mate so that thing sits in there real nice same thing on the back one we'll go ahead and ro rotate our flat spots so they're about even with the center of the flat spots about even with the parting line and then we can put our main caps on we've got our bar in there and that, what that's going to do is that's going to center the deck to the center line, or it's going to square the deck to the center line of the crank. The beauty of this fixture is you're, you're at a perfect 90 degrees once you mill your block to the center line of the crank. So put your caps on, run them down. And I haven't really been able to get any for information um, from BHJ about whether or not these caps should be torqued. I don't really torque them, however I do snug them up and make them tight. Um, I don't know that it's necessarily essential to torque these caps. We'll go ahead and seat them and we'll get them good and snug so nothing's going to move on us. comfortable torque when you can. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly confident that what I do to them is plenty good enough as far as making sure this thing is stable. We definitely don't want to leave them loose. But I know that even when these are torqued down, um, 
that ring doesn't fit in there super tight. It's a snug fit, but it's not a super tight fit. So we'll go ahead and snug these up real good. Nuggly. And our bar should still move in there. And it does. Our bar moves like this. It's a real nice fixture. Um, so then we got this backing piece. Um, let me move this around. Come on to the back here, Dan. Come on around here. We got this piece here that goes on the back, and this is just a, a, a plate, a, a stabilizing plate that goes right on the back. And it, it slides right over the bar here. And we'll just slide her on there. Again, it's a real close tolerance fit, so everything has to go on just right. And then we've got this centering cone. Um, the centering cone goes into the, the cam tunnel, and it actually mates up to this other piece here, and so these go into the cam tunnel here, and they're attached by the plate. So we'll take this, this cone here fits right into this slot on our fixture. So we'll just take our cone, and we'll slide it right into our slot here, just like that. And then of course, it's adjustable, so we can put this anywhere it needs to be. And then we just slide our plate right up to the block. Right on up, and our cone fits real nice right into the cam tunnel. And okay, then we're going to come to the other side of the block here. And this is the other end of our cone here. And we're going to run this through. Right on, come on up here, Dan. We're going to run it through, and it, it, we're going to just hook up to our other piece of threaded rod here. And we're going to, we're going to attach that. And that, that's going to do a real nice job of holding all this in place. So we just snug it up. And once these cones are snugged up and in place, we got a real good stable setup on our bar here. Then we can go ahead and set our bar into our V-blocks on the machine. And we're in business. Now on this other end we have a, another piece that goes on here. We're going to put a washer on. And then we're going to go ahead and run this onto our threaded rod. Because we want, we want this to be snug on both ends. But if I want you to make a note of just how easy this thing is to set up. I mean, it's I haven't really even used any tools yet. I've basically all done all of this by hand. Now I am going to snug up the front end here with a crescent wrench. So realistically, all you would need is a crescent wrench and, of course, a socket to, to tighten down the main caps. But for the fixture itself, it's, it's very, very versatile. Um, doesn't really require a lot of extravagant setup or anything of that nature. So we'll get it in there and get it nice and snug, like so. Then I'm just going to take a crescent wrench just to ensure that this thing is, you know, stable and, and snug. There is a nut on this end. And we'll just go ahead and we'll snug that, snug that nut up to make sure that everything's good and tight in here. We don't have anything moving. That is a very stable setup. And that's basically how you set it up. We're going to pick the block up with the hoist, move it over to the uh, milling machine. We'll get a setup on the mill. I'm not going to bore you with all of that, picking it up and trying to center it on the mill. So we'll just cut that out of the video. But we'll have another video, part two, which is once we get the block set up, we'll show you how we zero this thing in and, and go ahead and mill it. And so tune in next time. Thanks.